Sam, we're live. Excellent. Hello, Kevin. Hello, everybody else. Good this is the on. first time streaming everywhere onto the interwebs. We're live on YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitch, Facebook, Twitter. Have I forgotten one? I think that's all of them. Excellent. So do reach out. Um, we're here for the next hour talking about climate action with my co-host Gavin and I've got a very special drink today. I've got something called Benison's um, West Coast IPA. Not sponsored by them. I just thought I'd, I'd crack open a very special can of um, craft, well, IPA in this case. Does it count as an ale? Who knows? I'm, I'm well, saying... is IPA different? I'm, I'm very ignorant. I just drink this stuff. Um, Gavin, good to see you back. Uh, last week, back. we talked about loads of wonderful stats. You had amazing stats for us. Uh, and, and I think we settled on one thing that, if I remember correctly, we talked about what if, um, you can remind us of the stats in one second, but we talked about what if everybody reduced their kind of carbon emissions by one ton a year, yeah. which to me, even one ton, knowing how much roughly one ton looks like on the road, which is about the size of a of a medium saloon car, I think. That's a lot. Yeah, but it's <laughs> but when you think of it, that's uh, about eight percent for the average adult. So eight percent. We're that's saving eight percent. That's the goal. Yeah, that that would be a ton because in the UK you have about twelve tons a year. So if you can actually reduce yourself by um, one ton a year, in America it's twenty five tons per head. So they can reduce by one ton. The United wow. Arab Emirates, it's thirty. Sorry, let, let's just recap that. It was sixteen tons for the UK average. Twelve, 12 for the uh, UK 12. average, without any flight. Average UK ad, adult, and more than twice that for the Americans. Yeah, yeah, America's uh, twenty-five tons per head. What, why are they doing worse than we are doing? Because uh, even, even twelve higher, tons strikes me as a lot. Higher use of um, fossil fuels. Um, I mean, there's more. I think there's more biodigesters in the UK than there is in the whole of um, uh, America. They're just slightly behind the uh, the curve on the technologies that actually that that the, uh, that they've normalised out there. Um, and then if you go into the UAE, um, you're at 35 tons ahead. Jesus Christ! Because sorry, sorry to swear, and I'll, 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 I'll refrain from using coarse language, but that is that is insane. But it's also a lifestyle, you know, that that's people living in a desert. So they're living with air conditioning. And so some people, there are two, two schools of thought that, you know, those people are terrible because they're consuming so much. Or should we be focusing efforts? Should we just accept that people are going to use air conditioning? So we need mm -hmm. to find an environmentally friendly way of doing it. Is it is it the car driving? Is it the industry? Or is it lifestyle choices like, well, air conditioning, I don't think is a lifestyle choice in, in the UAE, no. but... No. Because it's so very, very hot over there. Yeah, and, and you need a lot of resource for pumping stuff around. Yeah, you know, there, there's, yeah, you know, you're working with sand, and you know, you're in a desert, so it, it's it's far more, um, uh, uh, and all the materials have to be brought in and laid. So you know, you have, you know, you're not just getting um, any materials from locally for building anything. So yeah, far higher footprint. But do then, think, the other... do you think that stuff like the 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 strip? I think they called it. That 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 interesting city building project where they say we're gonna not have a normal city, we're gonna yeah, have, just yeah. gonna have a very long one. Yeah, is that gonna help? Well, um, I was just looking it up just to remember, make sure I got the um, yeah, Neom N E O M, um, the Neom project. Um, mm -hmm. it's interesting. Um, as with everything, you have to kind of give people credit for for trying, but. You know, when they started out, they were using um, uh, electric, or they're still using electric uh, uh, diggers and um, machinery, plant, electric plant for what they're doing. Mm. But because they didn't have the solar hooked up yet, they, they, they took generators out into the desert to charge the electric um, diggers. So, and also, you know, you, you have to say, okay, the, 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 the size of the project is very ambitious. The, the, the concept of it is very ambitious, but... You know, do we really need to 
dump hundreds of millions of tons of concrete in the desert or can we already take something that's already there and make it better yeah you know, it, it, it's a difficult because in china there, there's what 23 smart cities which will all have automated transport no cars you know very small smart cities yeah and the smart like Milton Keynes. Uh, that that but if you imagine the next generation so everything runs you know, there's, there's automated transport for everything you know everything is interconnected your recycling goes down shoot you know, it's all fully connected Wait, but they've got 23 gavin 23 are on, on, either in planning or under construction at the moment in china um because they, they you know because they, they they've got to the the the, the 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 chinese however you view them the chinese are very industrious because when i used to you know go out to china they used to talk about the 135 plan one year was to plan it three years was to build it five years you shouldn't even know that it's a new project it should just blend in Wow. And that's how they built bridges and roads, because obviously in, in, in China, they can make these decisions and just say, right, we're not building any more new cities. All the new cities are going to be smart cities. That is the rule, which wh however you kind of view it can be you know, a challenging view of things, but also it, it gets decisions made. You know? It's not all bad, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to go into this whole yeah. China situation. Well, yeah, we should avoid that. Like the I, I don't want to get. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't need to make friends. Uh, unfriends, I guess. I, I think it's, there's something to be said for having the benefit of that setup, where you can just say, "Look, we're just going to build this this way." Um, it obviously has some drawbacks as well. But if we map that to Milton Keynes, which is uh, supposedly quite a forward-thinking, very yeah. young city, 50 years yeah. old. Uh, this was it this year or last year? I think it was this year. 55, I think now 67. So next okay. year is the yeah, so the, the, the uh, this year's 55, 23rd of January, I think. Somebody help the, us in the comments. Yeah, I'm sure it was the 23rd of January 1967 yeah, where yeah. it actually um, where it got its status. But what, why are we not doing that here? Because we're talking about reducing this 12 tons, which you know, by comparison with the heavy hitters, is obviously not that bad. But it's still pretty pretty bad for hmm. you know a country. If, the, if we look at the UK as a whole, yeah. that said, oh, we, we're going to be very forward thinking and and modern and green. It's going to yeah. be sustainable. Everything. It's like, uh, well, hang on. China's got 23 smart cities. UAE are trying to build a whole new everything in a, in a yeah. very different way from the ground up. I mean, there's this city in the desert. I can't remember whether it's Dubai or UAE or something. That's the long city. That's the, near yeah. Oh, that's the one that you meant. Yeah. 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 Where, where you have like, um, it's, it's, it's literally a city in the middle of the desert. Um, yeah. Where, I, if I remember, they've got these self-driving cars or pods under yep. the city and uh in this park and ride system and it's all pedestrianized Milton Keynes just been to to the center the only green thing are i would say semi fake plants in the in the center you know they're very offended by that it's all real plants in the center they're all, all real, real plants they look you, you have that. yeah yeah I, i've probably got a dull stat about how many plants are in there but Did anyway you, do you think then that if we did something, if we took a leaf out of, no pun intended, out of the Chinese yeah. playbook and said, um, we're going to be a bit smarter with our cities and we say, OK, in Milton Keynes, the new Santander building, instead of having it just glass, steel and concrete, we use different building methods, perhaps, or we uh, you know, stipulate that the facade needs to be less glass, which reflects sunlight and everything else, but, you know, less yeah. glass and more greenery. You can, but the challenge with telling there's always a challenge with telling people what to do, you know, with with asking for change, because there will always be somebody that will, and and this is part of the reason that we're paralysed, and and it's also the reason that people go out and glue their faces to roads and 92 year old grannies, you know, walk from London to Scotland for the, the COP26 because people are actually desperate for for movement to happen, mm. but the problem is, you know, realistically, we're not. Yeah, I, 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 today our prime minister flew in a private jet that cost seven and a half thousand pounds a day to have parked up. He then flew to Edinburgh, flew to Manchester, and flew back to London, all serviceable by train. 
Knowing the British train system, though, it, it will probably have only gotten to one of its destinations. It was, I, I saw the president of, um, uh, Mas I think it was Macedonia the other day, who, whose um, daughter was being uh, 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 bullied at school or something, as a Down mm -hmm. syndrome daughter, and, and he walked her to school. So there's, there's, Sp there's, Speaking of school runs and, and um, estranias, is that the right word I'm looking for here? Uh, uh, car use, there was... Is it Johnny, the car pervert? Oh yeah, from um, fully charged. Fully charged. Yeah. Johnny, yeah, I love him, and he had a little rant while he was sitting in the car. I'm not sure whether you saw it about uh, in his village. I think that there's a particular member of the community uh, who's driving their kids to school in a massive diesel yeah. burning and, and, and CO2 spewing uh, Land Rover or Range Rover even. 100 meters, 100 yeah. meters from his store to the school to drop his kids off. I mean, how unsafe are the streets in that village that yeah. he felt it necessary to drive that distance in a... I mean, the engine isn't even turned over twice before he gets there, right? Yeah, but but, but I think that, that, that kind of goes back to, you know, our, our, our point about kind of, you know, people taking planes instead of buses. You know, mm -hmm. If you make transport accessible and good, people use it. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's... Yeah, um, I was looking after you in Switzerland last year, and I love going to Switzerland. City map wrap in hand, bang. You know, you, you can find the train, you know, arrive somewhere, find a scooter. Yeah, it, it's it just works. Yeah, and things run on time, and the the stations are clean, and it's far more affordable. Yeah, mm -hmm. we have one of the highest costs of public transport. You know, in Europe. Well, we're not in Europe anymore. Oh, we're more expensive than Europe. Well, we, we, our neighbours, our cousins in um, in Europe are certainly leading the way. In, in even though that you know our government likes to say we are all kind of top whatever, we, we are not really. We're quite behind in in some of these cases. And I think we touched on a few, going back to the original point about saving yeah. one ton per person per year. Yeah, you know, using more public transport um, is one major factor. Yeah. Using your car less. Yeah. I mean, you said um, you said about Milton Keynes specifically because you were saying mm -hmm. how, how you know, should yeah, we go yeah. smart city, all those kind of things. I've always thought that the red routes are are way underutilized. You know, any time that I've cycled on them, you know, or or used my scooter on them, nigh on deserted. I mean, you barely have any in Bletchley. You know, this it's, is the thing that annoys me. I have to drive down. I've got a hybrid, so I mostly drive around. Um, uh, on fully electric, thankfully, and only the longer distances on petrol. But you know, I I have to drive down to pick up my kids because the the pavement is so narrow that two people can barely pass. Let alone, you know, uh, cycling because it is unsafe by design almost. You know, there's no because it is the old village or one of the three villages that make up Milton Keynes, yeah. small towns even, yeah. you know, there, there isn't anything to get around. And I'm not sure whether you saw, there was another post, I think, yesterday about um, building this this whole um, weird paradox where the, the roads are congested, so we build more roads, so yeah. we get more cars, so they're congested again. Yeah. We build bigger roads, they get more congested again. And and people use the public transport or bicycle, uh, bicycling, bicycling, cycling or walking less because you need to give up the pavements and the red roads and, and or redways and, and all of those things to accommodate all the cars. So hmm. should we actually flip it and say we do less roads and more uh, kind of cycle path and stuff and maybe then people will use them more? I, I, I hope so. There was there was an initiative or is has been an initiative from. Buckingham down to Winslow, where the new station's being built. And they've already put a cycle route. So you can cycle from Buckingham to Windsor, not on the road. Wow. That's which, sounds I, think very is, safe. which I think is, you know, a great idea. Because yeah, I enjoy using, you know, public transport where it's available, but you know, when when it's you know I mean I, I, I you know, I'm going up to Scotland in June for my nephew's um wedding. And it is cheaper to fly than to take the train for a family of four. Yeah, that's crazy. That, that sh it shouldn't be like that because the tonnage of a single flight, you know, to Glasgow is massive compared to the tonnage of a single train 
and it's but it's also kind of optimizing it because if if you if you have a transport system that people know works people use it mm. yeah it, I, again i go back to my example you know in switzerland it 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 it, it just all works you know it, it all the stations are very clean there's information you know etc etc and you know the platforms are, are are big enough it's very you know they're very easy to use um as opposed to you know in the uk where we still have many tube stations that are inaccessible to wheelchairs and mm. you know, e e even an average wheelchair user even using milton Keynes, which has got you know the um the lifts down to the platform so you do have a single level in and then you're, you're straight down you still have to phone somebody book make sure that you're on the right bit of the platform mm. so you've got to blow whistle mm. out a little ramp no trains should be built with ramps in them you know that sounds people, terribly um hostile hostile yeah, by design almost yeah. yes I, I was reading a tweet this morning about uh, a, a wheelchair user um, who has refused entry to a bus because they have this one space on the bottom of a double decker um and there's a buggy in it and this mm -hmm. wheelchair user said well actually no I'll, I'll be able to get in as well and the guy refused her and, he, and she was like well you can't refuse me I, I can get on the bus and i can get out of people's way and mm -hmm. because he couldn't put her in the designated spot no and, and but but accessibility like that you know if you if you put in a a, a lowering ramp it means that people with push chairs makes that, that easier if you're walking with a stick it makes that easier mm. you know, you if you're slightly on firm on your feet it makes that easier so it goes it kind of goes back to the i mean it, it, one of the core problems of people being green because we were talking about you know, do we force people or do we you know get the you that's one of the problems one of the core problems is we can't it's very difficult to set the agendas because we all we saw the uh, Kyoto Agreement, Paris Agreement, you know, targets that have just been ignored, you know, mm. to, to all intents and purposes. You know, I praise all the work that's being done, but by the, you know, we just can't have, you know, countries saying, well, no, it's going to be 2070. Oh, we'll do it 2050. We're going to do it 2035. But then, you know, it's all a little bit greenwashed when you start kind of, you know, there was a thing, I don't know if you read last week, where the uh, EU was trying to recategorize uh, nuclear power as sustainable, so people get carbon credit yeah. off it. Or green, green gas, and what was the other yeah. thing that was again on the um, fully charged uh, feed? I think uh, Robert Llewellyn posted. I think it was this uh, a photo of something that said green diesel or something like that. Was you know, it's like what? Yeah. It's we can't just slap a green anything on on something, and I'm I know there's a lot of people who it's in the Green Party. There's a whole um, group of them who feel that uh, nuclear power is you know much greener than coal, and and yeah, yes, that is absolutely gr nuclear power is greener than coal and gas and, and oil, but we are nowhere near a solution. To do, you know, to treat the waste or store, uh, store the waste safely, it's. Yeah. I think that ship has sailed. It's uh, fusion power, maybe to the rescue at some point. But right now, no. you know, we we have a massive investment in green energy, which is great. My home right now is being powered by green energy. Um, I think one of the issues we are having in this country is storing all of that power. There's only so much pumped hydro that we've got that, you know, large capacity in the system. So I think maybe there needs to be more micro generation. There may need to be more of an uptake of plug in um, electric vehicles that act as a battery buffer for the grid, you know, where the car yeah. can pa uh, send power back to the grid. And it's, it's like th there's a lot more. And I always think that there's a lot of good in what we're talking about, a lot of good that people are planning, but then there's never enough follow through. You know, it's the same with the plastic uh, bag uh, ban and, and all of these things, or we're not, we're going one step or we're going two steps, but we're going one step back or we're just, you know, dipping our toe in, in the water and then going like, that's enough. That's green enough. I've done my bit. It's like I've, I've recycled one pudding, uh, a container today yes. so I'll, I'll be fine the yogurt pot yogurt yeah. pot that's it we might need to, to go a little bit further to reach that one ton 
uh, per person per year then. So more public transport, more green buildings. I mean, there isn't one. Do you know a green building? I've seen one in the in London that had a wall that was just like green stuff. I mean, there are a couple that have been fairly pioneering. There was a very early one, believe it or not. Um, and you know, this is not a great fact, but um, in uh, Alton's, uh, just outside Aberdeen, in the 80s, that was one of the very first green buildings. Guess who owned it? Shell. Shell. It was the Scottish head office of Shell. And they invested ah. in insulation and heat uh, regenerative systems, etc. Mm. But, but that's one of the problems of greenwashing. You know, it, 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 it's... Don't get me started talking about oil companies doing green stuff because it is a pet peeve of mine. Well, focusing, um, on, focusing on the small things that people can do. Yeah, there there are things you know, um, you mm. know, tiny things can make a massive difference. You know, a bamboo toothbrush, mm. you know, a, 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 a toothpaste that's not in a tube. You know, there's lots yes. of toothpaste so you can, you know, there like they're, they're, and stuff. Mm. Hair, yeah, the bars, shampoo, uh, hair shampoo bars. Yeah, you know, the, these are things that. You know, because uh, the, the thing about the, the people say to me, well, well, you know, being green must cost more. Well, no, I spend less on my heating. I spend, you know, because I've invested in insulation and, you know, tends to be recycling, reusing and being sensible a actually saves you money. But, you know, part of the driver, you know, is um, uh, it, 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 it's because green is not seen as being profitable green is you know the problem is green is being seen as a punishment by a lot of mm. people you know i can't have this because of i can't have this because of that whole thing needs reframing you know um you know people talk about their carbon footprint what from the oil that is in your car that bp took out that the government got tax from and that somebody mm. owns the oil field for but you're the one that you know is naughty and using it so you have to pay the guilt this all has to be reframed, um, yeah. and you know, even things like using bars. You know, each person that um, uh, uh, you know, gave up using shampoo bottles, you know, there's a huge impact because people aren't going to go backwards to it. But and also it drives the economics of change because if we keep buying plastic shampoo bottles, Procter and Gamble will keep keep making plastic mm -hmm. shampoo bottles. If we all start buying bars in paper wrappings to wash our hair with Procter and Gamble will start making bars in paper wrappers for us to wash the hair. That's it. That's a great point. Have you yeah. seen what Colgate, uh, Colgate, I think did on the back of this whole, um, tube backlash that, that happened, I think back end of last year, mm -hmm. they now print that they're on, on the packaging that their uh, plastic tubes are sustainable or they're recyclable. It's like, just putting a logo on there that says I'm recyclable or please recycle me or please save some water, yeah. it's not really going to help because it's not recyclable unless you wash it out and you check yeah. very carefully whether yeah. that type of plastic is actually recycled by your local council, which I think is another big oversight in this country where we have so many different systems. It's really, really confusing. Yes. That is bad because I think it was Germany that pioneered the green dot system, wasn't it? Yes, the green dot. I remember it vividly. I was actually in Germany when they introduced it, and there was a lot of backlash. There was a lot of backlash against um, the charges for plastic bags, the the deposits on on cans and, and glass bottles yeah, and stuff. Yeah. But it's been probably I don't know fifteen years now or whatever, however long it's been, and it, it's just you get used to it and yeah. you know you have to make that decision it's going back to the whole china thing you kind yeah. of sometimes have to just go and say no we, we this is the right thing to do and yeah. i know that in this country there was a big upheaval about the uh, the charge for for carrier bags and it's uh, come on you know you're not losing your freedom because you can still buy the blooming things it's just the same in germany you can choose not to recycle you can choose to not return the 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 the, the tin or the glass bottle but then yeah. you lose your deposit 
tough. Yeah. So if you want to be a polluter, if you want to go against the grain of what's right and proper and morally and ethically, I think where you should what you should be doing, then yeah, you should pay an extra tax. Hence why I'm a big fan of taxation and taxation of yeah. people who drive the massive cars and who do the big pollution and well, well, sadly, we're not in a position with our government to have any of these things happen, do we? Well, that's one of the challenges. You know, again, you know, should somebody... So, it, it was like what we were talking about last week. You know, people yeah, will still yeah. buy luxury handbags, so let's make luxury handbags out of something different than really rare animals that somebody's shot mm. or trapped. Let's make them out of cool recycled fire hoses and weird stuff. You know, um, uh, so the, you know, the, the, the problem isn't really with the person that has watched the advert, drank the Kool-Aid and believes that they and earns enough to be able to actually buy a big four by four. Mm. The problem, the problem's further upstream, you know, from oil companies making record, record profits, from car companies telling us we need a new car every year to now saying we need to throw away all those cars and actually all need to buy electric cars. The, the, you know, there was an interesting study done, um, I wish I'd actually forward it on to you, where um, somebody worked out what happened if just all the car companies were stopped from making cars, just at, at like 12 o'clock, bang, no mm. more new cars. And the, the, the saving in the consumption, if you imagine all the global car companies shutting down, and we just had to maintain the cars that we had here already, the cars, the trucks, the buses some you know obviously innovate with safety etc that would actually be cleaner than actually allowing the car industry to reinvent themselves as an electric car industry we're going back oh, absolutely right we should go and um, we talked about this last week mm. you know we should go back to this whole mindset of culture of i don't need to have the latest greatest i don't need yeah. to drive a new car every year i don't yeah. need to get myself into debt and, and destroy the planet and the environment i just yeah. need to look after what i've got but yeah. i, I want to go back on one thing that you said earlier is like how do we reframe this perception and this culture then what do we need to do how do can how can we uh, change people's perception of what what they should be doing well it's where the value sits because the perception is in the, the value sits in um the glorification of owning something. I own a big white Range Rover. I own a big house. I own. I don't actually. Um, well, you do have a big white SUV, and you have a big house. But it's not. A, it's not a Range Rover. And I do. Have a house, yeah. Um, so it, it reframing it, I think, is allowing people to uh, two things. People have to understand whose responsibility it is. You know. So when I do business with people, I ask about their their approach to environmentalism. And, you know, if it doesn't match mine, I don't work with them. You know, some people would say, yeah, that's fine. They don't want to work with you anyway. But the irrelevant, you know, the shops I shop at, you know, the companies I use, the products I buy, you know, mm -hmm. my, 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 one, of, one of all of our weapons is our wallet. It's one of the strongest ones, you know. And I, 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 so I think people have got to, you know, come out of the, because in the 80s and the 90s, you know, you know con consumerism was driven heavily. And unfortunately, certainly in the UK, we have built our industry on a service economy. Mm -hmm. So getting a cab to a restaurant to be served, to go see a film, to go to a bar, to buy drinks, to be driven home. Gosh, I haven't done that for years. <laughs> Thanks, but, but our economy is <laughs> our economy is Yeah. We don't, we're not the world's biggest manufacturer of anything. So, yeah. so what what do you think then about what happened, for example, two episodes ago, I think, in, on The Apprentice, where somebody said, oh, they were, they were designing a computer game, I think, or, you know, mobile game, whatever. Mm -hmm. And somebody said, basically suggested that sustainability and environmentalism is, is basically on trend. You know, saving the penguins in the Arctic oh, is, is, is on trend. Can can climate change ever be? Should it be a trend thing, or should it be something that is positioned outside of trends? In, in well, I think on the, on, on the view of all press is good press. You know, um, you know, it, it, if that allows us for you know one or two more people to become slightly more educated about you know having less things to throw away, you know, having you know more things going in the uh, uh, in the recycling, you know. Um, 
you know, and just, you know, it because IKEA, I think, officially opened the store, the second store, or whatever we can in the UK, where you can sell your furniture back and recycle it. Mm -hmm. And there's, I think, one of the big brands, I can't remember if it's Louis Vuitton, somebody's got a recycling scheme or Gucci or somebody where you can hand your stuff back and you get paid for it. You know, that needs to happen more, you know, because the, 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 the challenges are at the, at the peak where we have all these corporations. So we've got, I don't know, uh, uh, quite a small amount of corporations, you know, running about 40, 50 percent of the finance, finances of the world. You know, those those are the corporations that need to actually change because it, it's not about earning lots of money for very few people. And that's one of the pivots that's got to happen. You know, the 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 the. I, I know very few rich, or not very, very few. Well, actually, I do know a couple of um, multi-millionaire uh, active in, environments, but they are the exception to the rule. You know, mm -hmm. they, they they don't you know of the level of consumption, an acceptable consumption. Whilst we still actually think, you know, somebody wearing an expensive designer outfit, wearing expensive sunglasses, sitting on the bonnet of an expensive car, is living their best life. We're not going to win. Mm. Yeah, you can still live your best life wearing any pair of glasses, sitting in the bottom of any car, smiling at your friends. That that's cool, and you're allowed to wear whatever you want. I'm, I'm Maybe we need to do a, an anti-Instagram kind of campaign where we take a picture from a influencer sitting on their I don't know fancy car uh, with the fancy shades and the fancy sunshine. That's all fake, and we do one that is exactly like that, but with a real this, this, car. There's a woman in, that in does that day. on um, uh, uh, Instagram. She parodies all, all the celebrities. But the point hey, being... Awesome. Okay, what's her name? I can't remember, actually. I'll, I'll okay. look her up. But she does all the kind of famous poses. Yeah. And, uh, very funny. But 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 it kind of goes back to my point of where we can't be authoritarian about this. You know, we mm -hmm. can't force people. We can't... What we've got to do is, you know, that, that, that Instagrammer has got to be re-educated. You know, mm. it's got to be shown the light kind of thing. So you, what you're saying is not room 101, but we need to be very open and kind to them. We, well, that, like a previous um, uh, colleague of mine said, smother them with kindness rather than punish Well, them. it's got to lean both ways, to be honest. You know, on, on the on the green side, we we have to accept that rich people will buy big cars. We have to accept that people will spend 800 quid in a handbag and a thousand pounds on a you know, pair of sunglasses. Mm. So how can we support those businesses being cool and environmentally friendly? And then on the other side, we have to get you know the people that buy a new car every year or P uh, PCP, the new car every year, we have to stop them changing their cars. We have to stop them with disposable fashion. So there's a little bit of lean in required on both sides. I know, you know, if any of our green compadres are watching this, they'll probably be screaming at the, 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 the screen saying, well, I'm doing everything and they're doing nothing. But unity is the way forward, not division. And, and, and you know, if, if anything that current you know, geopolitics has taught us, you know, division will not get any solutions to anything. Yeah. The old wounds will open up. It will all come back. You are know, on the same merry-go-round. You know, at the moment with you know, is there going to be a war in Ukraine? Ukraine. You could also actually say is, is there going to be an enormous wages bonus for all British companies that work in the defence industry at, in September? <laughs> oh, we're not allowed to call it like that. We're 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 supposed to think our brave politicians are. No, there's no battle there. I, I'm I'm very doubtful if uh, Russia will actually invade, but. You know, the, 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 the theatre and focus and consumption of it. You know, anyway, I'm getting distracted on, on lack of unity. But it's an interesting tangent, yeah. We were talking about let's well, let's let's stay positive about um it's a unity. Impact, small Critical. actions everybody can take, like changing their toothpaste, looking after the car you have rather than buying a new car. But we need and more... encouraging people perhaps on, on the local councils to um I don't know, encourage the big building companies to actually build some innovative, smarter cities in, in, in buildings, you know, starting with reducing the amount of concrete we pour everywhere. We also need, you know, Greta Thunberg's for each generation because she's been somebody that's actually brought the youth together. You know, yeah. All the youth, you know, and whatever your view of her, I, I think she's very, 
certainly um, uh, uh, inspirational because other young kids around the world can say, yes, there's another one of those kids that doesn't get listened to like me. If mommy and daddy are going to listen to her on the TV, maybe they'll listen to me about wanting, you know, that we have the recycling, wanting to do this, wanting to do that. But we don't have the rest of Thunbergs from certainly for my generation or your generation. Who, who is it for our generation or my generation? Is it George Monbiot or so, people? Possibly, but, you know, there, there, there are very few and far between out there. I mean, e even apart from, okay, if we take Leonardo DiCaprio off the list, you know, name... Why? No, no, hang on, let me finish. Name a celebrity that is at the bastion of leading the Green Revolution. Somebody that's using their voice for good. Oh, um, no, now I've got the wrong name on, on the tip of my tongue. This is annoying. Xiao Reeves. He's yeah, very, he's, very I would say more ethical. Than green. But not perhaps with environmentalism. I, I, I don't really know whether he's... He, he he strikes me as somebody who would, you well, know, help an injured, uh, uh, yeah, we're, we're, or fallen out of the nest, or, or drive an electric car or whatever. But um, I don't know, Leonardo. Does it have to be a celebrity? Because one thing that yeah, re I, I really really like about Greta is she is genuinely um, a person who's concerned about these things. She she's not a celebrity using a platform. Uh, she's not a politician trying to score points. She's just just Greta. Do we need more people like that who are just like Greta and are that inspirational and in, in, in saying the right stuff? It takes us back to our Instagram perfect life discussion. Mm. You know, we, we need those people to influence those people. So, you know, if, you, if, if, for example, you know, it became a trend at award ceremonies to wear a hired outfit or a, a secondhand outfit, what would that do? You know, it, it, that sounds a good message. Is what yeah, it does. Oh, you know, it, 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 if you know, it shouldn't just be um, Coldplay. It shouldn't be the only ones. Cause I know Coldplay are working really, really hard to work out how they can actually go and entertain fans and not destroy the planet. Out. You know, we should be thinking about things like that. You mm -hmm. know, people like that. You know, but again, it goes back to the normalization. You know, I just want to see. You know, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, uh, Grande. Um, Ariana Grande. I want to see Ariana Grande saying, these are secondhand boots I bought from the charity shop because it saves the planet. Mm. Imagine the impact. We're talking about the one tons. Imagine, you know, 20 million Ariana Grande fans, you know, storming the charity shops and buying all the boots. How cool would that be? Yeah, you know, I mean, apart from for charity shops and recycling and you know all the rest of it, then more people will give to charity shops and charity shops yeah. leading into fantasy. But that's my point. That the the the, the, the we, we can say you know let let's get consensus and a little group over here can you know be worthy and come up with the right plans. To be pragmatic and be re realistic about it, we need volume, mm. we need hundreds, thousands, millions actually billions doing something about the planet and you know so re that reframing is actually about you know a celebrity saying i bought these boots from oxfam is about you know um uh you know a celebrity saying that you know you know they, they, they've, they've kept their car for you know or they've bought their father's car you know and they're still going to be using that you know it it, it it's it's trying to kind of show by example that we don't need to consume. You know, unfortunately, capitalism you know, is based on a consuming culture. You know, you use, you throw away, you reuse, you know, the basics of manufacturing because manufacturing never actually had re any recycling. You know, when we, when Henry, you know, Ford came up with the production line, he didn't have another way of actually taking them apart and reusing them again. You know, so we've never factored into production. It, it, you, you just raw materials, make something, sell it, bye-bye, rather than actually having a culture where you maintain it or it goes back to the shop and gets refurbished or it gets a new motor into it. You know, those are the things that we that I think shift the framing, but then you get back to the challenge again of are you going to get you know, Bosch or Hoover or Whirlpool to make their product, you know, 
10, 20 percent better in the weight of bearings and steel that they use so they can lose future sales. Aren't, aren't they similar to what Apple has been um, brandished? Is it brandished? They've been, they've been told off um, to mm. the tunes of, of millions in class action suits for building in obsolescence into yeah. their products by, by throttling the performance. And I just had that discussion, in fact, with, with somebody uh, where their phone is basically almost dead. And it's like... I've got storage space, and yes, the battery only has 65% capacity or something, but why is it basically not letting me do anything? It's no longer got the same level overall performance and utility as when I bought it. And I mean, it's it's a shame that, you know, buying a high-quality product has to come with a price and a lot of drawbacks. Like, I was really looking forward to changing my phone, my daily driver, to a Fairphone, which is a, one of the... Three, I think, brands who not only are they the only one who are completely ethical and transparent in their supply chain and, and you know, uh, fully recyclable, and they, in fact, have a buyback scheme, but they're also fully modular, which means you don't have to throw it away. However, it's a very mediocre phone still. It is not anywhere near the same performance that even, you know, a mid-range phone had three years ago so it's it's a re and, and then it costs twice what i just paid for a one-year-old android mid-range phone yeah. which is i i get better utility out of that thing than the old apple because my old apple phone is now serving as a camera because the battery costs 100 pounds to replace nobody else can replace it because you have to do it via apple if you really want it not blowing up in your face and everything is glued together and built in such a way that yeah. really you can either give it back to the person and then they basically shred it or it just ends up in the bin and this is disgusting it's like this mm -hmm. You know, the, the the idea of everybody having a new mobile phone every year, and, and the, apart from the insane amount of money we are all wasting on this, mm -hmm. it is it is e-waste. It is not just hazardous chemicals in there gluing stuff together when it should have been a screw, but it's also so botched together that you, the, the, the children on the rubbish heaps of the world, yeah. sadly that is a real thing, yeah, yeah. go through our e-waste that gets shipped off to, uh, you know, uh, South America or, or Africa yeah. or, or Asia even. You know, they, they look at this old iPhone and they're thinking, I can't, I can't do anything with this because it's all so built to be just discarded. Yeah. It's that I really want people to realize that their, their phone habit, their, you know, 800 pound a year phone, is 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 killing us because it's it's it is not sustainable. It's, the product isn't designed, let alone your washing machine. Mm. You know, and even then, if you compare the washing machine my mum had um, back, I don't know when she bought it in the seventies or eighties, that lasted twenty five years and got repaired every five years when something you know wore out, to mm. the stuff we've got now, it's like. When my washing machine broke, the I had the the local repair shop look at it, and they said, "Might as well buy a new one, mate." It's yeah. cheaper. Yeah, it's ridiculous. But, but but you can yeah even because we just we finally retired our cooker about a year ago, um and, and yeah we got twenty five years out of that. It, yeah, if there was a couple of repairs to it. Um, is that is um, that a good lifespan for a cooker? I don't, yeah, I'm not, I would say that's fairly re cook that respectable. Um, uh, but but when it when it faltered it was repaired yeah, yeah. um because you know uh, you know i've only ever owned one toaster i was lucky that when when lou and i got married we were given a jewel toaster and it's had a couple of sets of innards and a new you know switch knob on it but it's still the same one where do you get it repaired though i mean washing Just, machine i know where to go but a toaster uh, e-spares what you haven't been on e-spares I have been on eSpares, Gavin. Thank you for oh, that plug. Right. Uh, not affiliated. Yeah, not affiliated, but you want to sponsor it now. Uh, but I, there but you, you have to do it yourself, right? Uh, yes. I mean, I, I found a local guy that did a put in a new heating element and did the door, and that was 130 quid all in. What did you look for? Did you look for toaster repairs, Milton Keynes, or something? No, toasters, I just went to eSpares and bought the parts. And then you, like, how did you go about finding it, how, finding somebody who could fix it for you? Oh, no, the toaster I did myself. The cooker I found somebody uh, uh, locally. 
I, I just wow, did a search wow. left and found somebody there. Because oh, yeah, there this are... going back back to the ride ride to repair conversation we had last week, which is all about companies should be, from my point of view, companies should be strongly encouraged in no uncertain terms to make their products, you know, recyclable for sure, but repairable. Like John Deere got really um, dragged through the media if you're into uh, your tractors and, and yeah. you have an eye on agriculture like some people. They, they, basically, the farmers couldn't fix their own farming gear, which if you're yeah. in the middle of the countryside trying to get the harvest in and you have to call somebody in God knows where and then wait a week for a part to arrive and it yeah. can only be that guide to fix it you're screwed and you might lose an entire harvest harvest in the worst case but you know with a mobile phone or computer or toaster for that matter they should all be repairable easily i mean yeah it's well they've do done we, the do we, uh, is it education though as well is it to you know for our children growing up learning to fix things rather than just buy a new thing when it breaks i, I think it's consumers wanting you know things you know Wanting things that are of better quality, wanting things that are going to last longer, because you know the the the, the I mean, your point about the John Deere tractors is exactly the same as what they've done with people's cars. Yeah, mm. you, 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 something goes wrong, a little light flashes, and no idea. It's like Apple, the Apple yeah. of of, of uh, agricultural yeah. equipment. My 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 my, uh, my old um, Sebring that's now what fifty years old now. Mm. You know, I carry two fuses, a a bit of masking tape. A uh, set of screwdrivers and uh, uh, some cable ties, and even if it does break down, that you can just get under the hood. You say, "Oh, it's that bit. It's yeah. wrong. It tightens. Switch, do whatever." Go. That car has now been running, or certainly for me, has been a daily driver uh, for what five years now, mm -hmm. and it was forty-five years when I bought it. It's now it's coming up for. Uh, it's actually so. It's forty-nine this year. It'll be fifty next year. Um, doesn't do a huge amount of miles, but. That you know again is you know an example of uh, you know making things sustainable. You know, should you so if, if you had a really old, let's say you had a, a twenty-year-old mini, you know, should mm -hmm. you throw it in the bin, or should you spend a couple of thousand pounds just getting all the bits? Oh, I spent proper money. Maybe only car is worth five hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. You spend one and a half thousand pounds on getting another five years running out of it or should you scrap it and buy an electric car well you can't buy an electric car for anything less than like eight yeah, or well, nine you grand could do your monthly repayment thing let's yeah say. So, but as a principle you know people see old cars as being disposable you know and the, the, i see them as being dirty because a lot of them aren't maintained properly so they they burn you know oil for example and you get the nice smoke coming out of the tailpipe i think that there's there's a there's a key message here uh, which is all about maintaining what you've got to keep yeah, it in yeah, good yeah, order so. and yeah. not just run it into the ground yeah i i i i think so because it would, i mean it's yeah we're, we're we're kind of going around the subject of what you know one by one ton by ton yeah something like um but even in cars, if you actually have the correct tire pressure, mm. you get more miles to the gallon and you do less emissions. Yeah. So I, I, how many cars do you drive? I, I, I do all the time. You drive behind a car and you see you know, a soft tire. And you kind of think, well, that, that's not only that, that's leaving more rubber on the road, that's you know, uh, Literally. Consuming, mm. yeah, consuming more fuel. Etc. And it's all these little things. So if, if we just take a little bit more care to you know um you know choose a toothpaste that's not in a tube you know to and you know sometimes the green products could be better than the original i recommended one today and my favorite i have a new favorite um uh, flossing things so i like flossing my teeth and i hate hate plastic so i went down to our local top up and recycle shop in stony high street and bought some uh cotton with charcoal um uh, a tooth floss oh mm. my god that just leaves that plastic crap in the dark ages. Uh, I shall try it out. Not Did only you get it from the shop in uh, the refill market in, in Stony. Yeah, the little one in the high street. Um, yeah. uh, and because it has little bits of charcoal in the, in the cotton thread that are uh -huh. so and give your teeth a really good scrub. So actually, yeah, it may be pound more, pound fifty more. Not that I buy more than one or two 
things of uh, 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 so not all green products are actually not as good as the alternative mm -hmm. uh, and they're all out there I, I recently found one um, sticks that uh, were clearing drains and they're an enzyme so you drop oh, the, the, the ecos uh, yeah I always wondered what that was about because I, was, I saw them yeah, and I was going to cool idea I just put um, uh, not vinegar I do put vinegar but also um, oh what's it called the powder Caustic soda? Uh, yeah, uh, soda, crystal, about, uh, bicarbonate soda, that's it, sorry. Oh, bicarbonate soda, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, um, brain uh, brain fart. Yeah. But, you know, I always put that down the drain. So, so what do the enzyme sticks do? They're, they're like, they're, they're a replacement for that horrible bright orange declogger drain stuff. Yeah. That yeah. Just, who knows what they put in it, but it, 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 it burns out. And I do I used to have, you know, I, I, I have, well, I used to have four long haired people in the, my house. Now I only have three long haired people. Out. Not the ones moved out, one just got a haircut. Um, so we're there now. to ask, yeah. The sink declogger is a subject for me. And I feel, used to feel bad about pouring the orange stuff down. And mm. I've had stick things, you just like, drop the stick down. Yeah, it's, it's it in, the, in the bend, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But those are all the small things. So we're, next time, I mean, it's even you know, next time when you're out shopping, and this is not you personally, because I know you do this, but you know, anybody that's watching this is out shopping. Just just pause for a nanosecond and look at that packaging that's on it and think, well, actually, how's that one got less packaging? Or maybe I bet buy, you buy a bigger size. If you can afford to buy a bigger mm. size, you reduce packaging waste by about 70 or 80%, you know, yeah. because you're know, obviously not twice the size, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, I think um, so. My message is: Are we going to do? Are we going to force people to change? No. We need to help people to change, and and that's one of the tensions of climate action and climate activism. You know, we feel all passionate; we want to bang the drum and shout it from the rooftops, but that'll just annoy our neighbours, and they'll never stop buying tube, tube to toothpaste and plastic toothbrushes. You know, we have to be their friends. We have to tell them why. You know, um, you know. Uh, I, I made a just wonderful discovery today. I don't think I've got the browser open. No, I don't. Um, it was a company that makes um, dis you know, the, like plastic disposable cups, plates, mm. or all those polystyrene things, all those horrible oh, yeah. things everything made out of plants oh that's good yeah and it just looked like your normal plastic disposable cups and your plastic things and i, I think the cutlery was um pressed bamboo actually but uh, it, those things yes yeah yeah, yeah. i've, I've yeah, used them before the mm. ones that blew me away because they just look like plastic cups yeah. and i was searching for eco something else i was thinking why have I been served, I think, with horrible plastic disposable cups? Yeah. And then when I read it, they're all made out of this plant-based plastic. And I thought, well... As in sugar, sugar cane, uh, I think it is, something like that. Yeah, the, 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 so the, the point is, it's out there. You yeah. know? And, and you should ask for it as well. I remember the last time I had a coffee when COVID was taking a break, I think, two years ago. Um, I went out for a coffee with a friend safely um wearing mask and all and i think i asked the guy behind the counter i said this this doesn't look very sustainable this you know takeaway cup he said no you're right it isn't um we are you know you're not the first one to mention it no. but hopefully i will be one of the last people to mention it but i think it's important to ask people about this you know can i have a more sustainable takeaway thing. It's like, why are you delivering this? Like at Costco, why why are the the donuts, bless their donuts and their cookies, but why are they in these single use plastic containers? But they're recyclable. They shouldn't be a plastic. It is not getting recycled just because you put it in the recycling. We need to avoid it. So I think one of the things we can take away from today is, don't be afraid to ask. And yeah. demand it as well as voting with your pocket in saying, Don't demand, no, I'm going to buy the better product. Yeah. Don't demand, ask nicely and smile. We want, we, we want our, our green climate people to have a yes. really good reputation of being helpful people with nice suggestions. Yeah. 
And the guy that I recommended the tooth floss to today, actually, we're, it, we're having a chat about it. something that came up, and, it, and, and, and he's going to buy some. He actually ordered it while I was. I want to buy some now. That, that, <laughs> that's two people that aren't going to use plastic den dental floss again. Yeah. That's a win. You know, and, and, and the people who are watching this might be considering buying it as well, or might just try it out. I mean, I, I'll have to remember the name of that uh, the shop on Stony and the lovely French lady that uh, yes. runs it, um, because that's 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 cool. Also, ah, oh, have you seen? I think it's down your neck of the woods. <laughs> um, the Asda down. Oh yes, it's done all. It's got By all the stadium. Way. Yeah, I've, I've yeah, actually wanted to write a blog post about it, and I've, I've taken some photos, um, and it's sitting in my drafts folder. It's coming soon. Um, I'm amazed because I sometimes go to that Asta when I get fed up with Tesco's in Aldi, and we have this massive Asta, which is, I think, the biggest one in Europe or whatever. Yeah. And say what you will about Walmart and, and whoever owns Asta now, but they really went all out to have it as a as a mini mall if you will like an american mall i imagine but you have aisles now that have these dispensers in them i'm, I'm going to dig out the photo i'm going to put it up i swear i will we'll do that with uh jill sinistel's help um they have these the, the there's this big shelf it's, it's just it's massive that is just dispensers and somebody asked me but axel how do you buy this from a dispenser when you don't have a bucket or something to get to have your cereal in or your sugar or your washing powder? Said, aha, they have reusable uh, bottles and, and containers to fill in your, your nut mix or your breakfast cereal and whatnot. And they yeah. even put smaller ones into the aisles. Like when you go for the pet food, they've got a small pet food one. When you go to the um, washing up or cleaning products one, they've got a smaller cleaning products one. Hmm. It's amazing. They put a lot of thought into it, and it's main brand stuff as well. So it's not just the no brand, God knows where it comes from. It's it's main brands that you love and trust. Yeah. Calox or whatever are doing it in, in Unilever. And it's good to see that the big brands get behind it. So yeah. hopefully people use it. And it'll be interesting to get somebody from from the project from Asta's side who's been involved in talk to them. Or consumers, if you've you've been to that Asta or you've been to a refill market, let us know. I think it's a great idea. And I think it again, it needs this jumping over your shadow and going like, yeah, I'm gonna take my uh recycled bag with me shopping. I don't forget it, so I don't have to to buy one for ten P. I take that with me and I'm also going to take a few empty containers so I can buy the uh, the cereal or the washing powder. So I think there are, again, small things everybody can do. And again, if you are at an Asta or Tesco's and you run across a, a manager or supervisor or something, maybe ask them very nicely or maybe send an email to Tesco's or, or other Astas and, and shops exist, obviously, and say, I've seen this great thing. Um, can we have it in our local shop? And, and maybe you know, the more people who do that um yeah. the more the demand grows on their kind of i don't know how they measure that but you know the yeah. more people ask kindly or nicely as you put it going the more this will happen so yeah. i think that's a good positive note to to end the show on almost i think it is i think it's very positive now and, and also um yeah being being at valentine's day I, I, i'm going to go and see my lovely wife who only saw me for a little while um earlier um but yeah, thanks for having me back on, and um, yeah, great to have you next week. Um, I think we're with Jill, and hopefully one special guest. Um, if you know anybody else who might be interested in in sharing their story or their viewpoints on sustainability or, or climate action in general, please reach out. Um, I endeavour to have a copy of this uh, live stream up on my YouTube channel and obviously distribute it through the blog and, and the social media by Wednesday. And I've also got some offline podcast style recordings, one with Pooleyville, uh, which is an interesting um, set out a group of people who've come together in Milton Keynes and doing really amazing things. 
Uh, I've recorded that before. That's going to be released very shortly. So watch this space and, and reach out. I mean, this is supposed to be a discussion and a discourse. So please do get, be in touch. Don't be shy. I can see people watching this, which is great. I can see people watching the recordings, which is also great. So do give us a thumbs up on YouTube or wherever there's a thumb that you can click. Let us know that you like it or a thumbs down if you don't like it. And whichever way, it would be great to hear from you. Gavin, it's been an absolute blast. Have a fantastic rest of your Valentine's Day and I will, I will. see all of you next Monday. Take care. Bye-bye.